In this video, we are doing break-even analysis. So you would conduct break-even analysis when you're doing capacity planning. We're looking at our different alternatives and we're trying to find an approach that is more profitable for our organization. So break-even analysis is done when you are making choices about purchasing equipment, about changes in your process, uh, and looking at uh, how viable or profitable they are. So if you are following along in our Python workbooks, uh, you can go to drstephpowers.github.io slash mgmt-in-python. And you can go to the link here that's called Breakeven Analysis. It's actually using the same workbook that we've been using in our other capacity planning videos. Uh, so once you get here, then just click on Open in Collab. This is opening it uh, in Google Collab. In order to run the code, you will need to sign in uh, to your Google Drive. In order to amend the code, you will need to copy it to your Google Drive. Okay, so do that. And then the part we're looking for here is towards the bottom called break even analysis. And so I'm just gonna switch over to the one in which I am logged in. And, uh, and so we'll do some break even analysis. So let's go to some notes. So in our capacity planning process, we forecast demand. We turn that into a capacity requirement. So in our video about uh, hospital suites, we converted the forecasted number of surgeries into how many surgical suites that would be, and then compared it to our current capacity. We would then need to decide how to bridge the gap if they don't match. And so this brings us to the break even analysis discussion where we are evaluating different alternatives to determine what's a better approach. So let's look at a scenario here. Let's suppose, blah, blah, find it here. Of course, the other video or uh, slides that I'm sifting past, I have other videos that discuss in detail. Uh, so you can check those out as I speed past them. So let's suppose we wanna compare two different production methods. And in this case, uh, so let's leave that hospital example aside. Let's suppose that we're producing I don't know, let's suppose that we're producing cans of, of Pepsi. Uh, we have two different machines that we can use to do our production process. So we're comparing two different production methods or two different uh, technologies. And we could also use this to determine whether or not we should make something ourselves or whether we should outsource it. So when we look at the break-even analysis, what we're doing is we're considering our fixed costs and our variable costs as well as the revenue that this production of a good or service generates for us, okay? So whether you are making something, whether you are the hospital trying to treat those patients, right? There's money coming in to pay uh, your costs, uh, and then we have the costs themselves. So we're doing a comparison of that. And we wanna make sure we can identify the break-even point. This is the point at which we have covered our expenses. And so it's important to recognize that our expenses are fixed. There are some costs that do not depend on how much we produce, how many goods we make or services we provide. And there are variable costs, costs that change, that go up the more we make or more services we provide. So we have to consider both of those. So let's consider the scenario here. Let's suppose that we have two machines. One is more expensive than another. So machine A will cost us $40,000 to buy. Machine B costs us $30,000 to buy. Now there's variable costs depending on which machine we use. Maybe that's maintenance, maybe that is materials uh, that go into that part of the production process. So we have variable costs. Machine A costs $10 per unit. Machine B costs $12 per unit. And then because of what the machine offers in terms of um, customization, quality, maybe we can sell the product for different prices depending on which machine we use. So we can make $15 per unit in revenue with machine A or $16 with machine B, okay? Now, we want to figure out for each machine at what quantity would we break even? So how much would you have to make with machine A to make it worth its cost? How much for machine B? So we wanna know that break even point. So that way we can make sure it's even worth buying any of these machines because we want it to make profit, right? We want it more than break even. The other thing is, is we're comparing machine A and machine B. So we wanna know which one is more profitable 
and that's going to depend on the quantity of units we produce. So let's go to our Python code. Now, if we want to figure out the break even point, we need a formula. And you saw in that lecture video, I'll just flip right back, that the break even quantity is the fixed cost divided by our revenue per unit minus the variable cost per unit. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to look at per unit how much money we're going to make. So that's revenue minus variable cost tells you the money you make per unit. And then we have to take our fixed cost and we have to spread out that fixed cost across all of those profits per unit uh, to make sure that we're covering the fixed cost as well. So that's where that formula comes from. So if machine A costs $40,000 and the revenue per unit is 15, the variable cost is 10, we're making $5 after we take out the variable cost per unit we produce. But then we have to take that $5 and make sure that $5 per unit is really covering all that fixed cost. So you take the 40,000, you divide by that $5 you're making per unit, and you gotta make sure you've covered all the fixed costs to break even. So we get Q equals fixed cost divided by revenue per unit minus variable cost per unit. So you could do this calculation by hand or in Excel. You can also just create this calculation in Python. The benefit of creating this calculation in Python is that you define the calculation and then you can simply change out the different uh, numbers, different values, and it'll auto calculate it again for you. So let's define break even. And break even is gonna be a formula that has three components, fixed cost, variable cost per unit, and revenue per unit. So we'll call it F, C, V, and R, okay? And you can make it capitalized, not capitalized. As long as you're consistent uh, throughout, it doesn't really matter. So we're gonna define break even, and we're gonna use a break even formula that is F, C divided by R minus V. That's the same formula you saw before, and we want it to return or give to us or output that break even number. So we create this definition. Then we can say, okay, do this break even definition in the scenario where the machine A costs 40,000. So let's just double check this matches. Machine A costs 40,000, variable cost was 10, revenue was 15. So you wanna make sure that in your formula, we have fixed cost, then variable cost, then revenue. You wanna enter it in the same order. So 40,000 for the fixed cost, 10 for the variable cost per unit, 15 for the revenue per unit. You dump that in, it tells you that to break even on machine A, we would need to produce 8,000 units. Okay, let's look at machine B. Well, machine B is $30,000. The variable cost is $12 per unit. The revenue per unit is $16 per unit. So again, we wanna make sure we put it in the same order. So 30,000, variable cost of 12 per unit, and revenue per unit is 16. So you can see we can just have it auto-calculate again by changing out uh, any of those variables. So for machine B, it breaks even at a lower quantity at 7,500. So all all, all, ugh, can't talk. <laughs> so right away, we can see that if the quantity we're planning to produce is between 7,500 and 8,000, we want to go with machine B because machine B is making money after a quantity of 7,500, but machine A doesn't make any money until after a quantity of 8,000. Okay. Now, Let's suppose we wanna consider a bunch of different scenarios, a bunch of different quantities that we might produce. Because remember when we're doing capacity planning, we're looking at a forecast in terms of how much we need to make uh, and then trying to make decisions accordingly. So let's look at a bunch of different quantities, not necessarily just one. So let's create a second definition. This one is the definition of profit. So profit is total revenue, the money coming in, minus total cost, all the money going out. And so let's just flesh it out. You could put it all into one formula, but here let's just make sure we can see it. So total revenue is gonna be that revenue per unit times the quantity that we're going to produce, okay? So Q times R gives us the total money coming in. 
quantity we sell times the revenue per unit. Our total cost is the fixed cost, plus we have that variable cost per unit times the number of units. So we have B times Q. So what we're doing with this definition is saying, okay, calculate profit if I provide you the fixed cost, the variable cost per unit, the revenue per unit, and the quantity. Okay. So no longer are we just looking for break even, we're now saying find the profit at a certain quantity. So it's gonna find total revenue, it's gonna find total cost, and it's gonna find profit to find this total revenue minus total cost. Notice that this prof and profit here um, are, define, are different words, and that's so it doesn't get confused, right? So we want to basically call this definition profit and have it output this prof. Okay, so let's insert that definition in, which means now we can say, okay, machine A, 40,000 fixed cost, $10 per unit variable cost, $15 per unit revenue, how much is the profit if the quantity is 17,000? So if we make 17,000 units, machine A will make $45,000. What about machine B? Well, machine B had a fixed cost of 30,000. It had variable cost of 12. It had a revenue per unit of 16. Let's look at the same scenario. What if we made 17,000 units? Enter that in. Notice that machine B, while it broke even at a lower number, what we saw before, lower quantity, it doesn't make as much profit. Okay, so we notice here the profit is 38,000 and the profit machine A was 45,000. Well, this is one scenario. This is just where um, we're producing 17,000. Let's create a scenario where we look at all different quantities. Okay, so we're gonna create a loop. Let's start by creating some empty data sets. So we're gonna populate Q, we're gonna populate something we call profit A, that's the profit for machine A, and let's populate something we'll call profit B, that's gonna be the measurements of the profit for machine B. So we're gonna create a loop, after I enter in these empty ones here, we're gonna create a loop that goes from zero to 22,000 units. And we don't want every single quantity, so let's do it in increments of 2,000. So our loop, it goes in a range from zero to 22,000. Now remember with Python, it includes the lower bound, but it stops just before the upper bound. So you want this to be essentially higher than where you actually want it to stop, okay? So if I want to stop at 20,000, because I'm going in increments of 2,000, I write 22,000 here, okay? And then this is in increments. So here we're going every 2,000. Then what it's gonna do is it's going to take that number, zero, 2,000, 4,000, 6,000, and it's going to add it to Q. So Q is gonna end up being this list of zero, 2,000, 4,000, 6,000, 8,000, all the way to 20,000. Then for machine A, find the profit. If the fixed cost is 40,000, the variable cost is 10, the revenue is 15, and then notice here the quantity we're putting in a placeholder called I, because as we go through the loop, it's gonna find the profit for a quantity of 2,000, 4,000, 6,000, and so on. And then it's gonna take that profit and it's going to append or add it to our empty list here, of profit A, uh, it's gonna keep populating that, okay? And we're gonna do the same thing for machine B. So for machine B, the fixed cost was 30,000, the variable cost was 12, the revenue per unit was 16. Here we have our I holding the space for those different quantities, and then it's gonna populate that list for profit B. So let's run that. You could then say, okay, well show me the numbers for profit B. And you can see here, it starts off at low levels of quantity, we're not breaking even. We could, I can add more, you can see profit A. And then of course, you can see what it's created for our quantities, our Q, 
they go from zero, as we said, to 20,000, because remember the 22,000, it stops just before it. Now, this is great, there's a bunch of numbers, but I'm very much a graph person, so let's put it on a graph so it makes it easy to see what's going on. So we need to make sure we have imported the package for graphing, if you haven't already. If you did the previous videos with us, you've imported that a million times, uh, and it's always just a good idea to run it if you haven't. So we're importing matplotlib.pyplot, we're calling it PLT, this makes our graphing uh, makes the graphing package work. Then we're going to plot, plt.plot, whatever's on the horizontal, which here is going to be our quantities, is going to go on the horizontal, goes first. Profit A is what we want on the vertical, so we want how profitable is machine A at these different quantities, and let's mark it with some dots. All right, let's look at uh, plotting our quantities against machine B, how profitable is machine B? So again, profit B is what's gonna go on the vertical. Let's put some dots. We'll label the x-axis quantity, we'll label the vertical axis profit, and we're going to add a legend so we know which color is which. Make sure these match. So whatever went first, that was profit A, that's machine A. Whatever goes second, that was profit B, that's machine B. And this note here, this B box to anchor is to put the legend uh, below, that's the negative 0.15 and shift it towards the center, that's the 0.75. And we have two things here in our legend. I want them side by side, so the number of columns equals two. Add a grid and show it. So here we go. We can see machine A is blue, machine B is orange, here you have that 10,000 units that you found before. Um, did we find that before? Hang on, let's do this one piece at a time. Let's go back. We found that we broke even for machine A at 8,000. So let's go back to our graph. At 8,000, which is right here, you can see that machine A, the blue one, breaks even. And you can see that machine B breaks even around 7,500, which should match what you found before, okay? And then we also found that the profit at 17,000 was 45,000 for machine A and 38,000 for machine B. So let's take a look at our graph here. So 17,000 is about here, and you can see machine A is making more profit than machine B. Okay. Now, what we see here on the graph, some additional information we get from our graph, is that at 10,000, they give us the same amount of profit. Okay, so at 10,000 units, if that's what we forecast we need, we don't care. We're indifferent between machine A and machine B. If, as we talked about before, we are in between 7,500 and 8,000, we would rather have machine B, the orange one, because it has profit when machine A doesn't. But the profitability and the choice between the machines is going to depend on what your forecasted quantity is. Notice that at low levels, we lose less money with machine B than machine A. So if it's a possibility that you're producing at lower quantities, well, first of all, you probably don't want machine A or B because they're not making you any money. But if those are your only options, because you have lots of variability, uh, then you go with machine B. But notice the downside is that at higher quantities, machine B like makes you less profitable. And if you are forecasting quantities up here in this range, close to 20,000, you'd much rather have machine A because it's going to make you more money. So your choice as to which production method to choose, which technology, which machines, which process, you do a break-even analysis and you create a graph like this to really help inform that decision as to what equipment really impacts the bottom line. Okay, And so as part of capacity planning, we do our break-even analysis.